Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So Australia has some of the most awesome reptiles anywhere on Earth. The carpet pythons, the bearded dragons, and the blue-tongued skinks, just to name a few. But what are the blue-tongued skinks doing out here? Well, I'm gonna take some time out here and I'm gonna find a few of them. They're really easy to find. But before we head out into the wild, be sure to like us on Instagram and be sure to hit that subscribe button. And when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. But right now, let's head out into the wilds of Australia and check out to see what blue-tongued skinks are doing out here, how they're earning a living, what they're eating, what temperatures they like, so that we better know how to care for them in our homes. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild. And while I'm at it, checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation, and conservation. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, so the best and easiest way, and well, laziest, to find blue tongue skinks out here in Australia is to just get in the car and drive down the road until you see one crossing the road. All right, let's go find some blue tongues. Look at this copperhead. Look at the sun hitting him and all those colors just popping on him. All right, so the reptiles are coming out on the road. It's just a matter of time before we find a bluey out here. Let's get him off the road, shall we? All right, buddy. See you later. All right, so the reptiles are just starting to come out on the road. That was a really gorgeous copperhead, but we're gonna get in the car. We're gonna continue our search for blueys out here. We got a blue tongue over here. Is it Easter? Nice, look at that. Yeah, it's a beautiful Eastern. Woo, all right. So take a look at this big, beautiful blue tongue skink. You know, the Easterns are not very common in collections in Europe and North America, but they're very common here in the wild in Australia. It's also kind of interesting that a lot of people in North America and Europe keep northern blue tongues, which aren't very common here in Australia. This Eastern is the most common of the six types of blue tongues that are found here in Australia. And to be honest, I don't know, these guys give the Northerns a run for their money when it comes to beauty, but there's a reason for that in that the Northerns are a subspecies of the Eastern blue tongue skink. But one of the differences is, is that if you look on the side of his head, you see that black line from his eye all the way down his head. Well, Northerns basically have patternless heads. This guy has that bandit mask that is really cool, but have a look at those super orange sides. Now, Northerns have orange sides like that, but look at the green undertone that Easterns have that a lot of Northerns simply don't have. Take a look at this guy's belly and how just beautifully red that is. But out here in the country, just like they do in suburban backyards in Sydney, this guy's making a really good living for himself out here as an omnivore, which of course means that he eats both plant matter and meat. And a big lizard like this, he likes big crunchy bugs. And under all these logs here, there's cockroaches and there's other arthropods that this guy just loves to munch on. So another thing on the menu for these blue tongue skinks are these blackberries. This low hanging one has been stripped pretty clean probably by a blue tongue in the area. And for those of you who live in North America, you may recognize this. This is actually invasive here in Australia and it's actually native to North America, but it just grows everywhere around this part of Australia. It's really taken over as an invasive species. But the silver lining is, it really is to the benefit of the blue tongue skinks in the area. So where we are now in Western New South Wales, these Easterns are actually sharing this habitat with the blotched blue tongue. And in this habitat, in this part of the country, this is a land of extremes. 
in the winter time between maybe May and September, which is Australia's winter, these guys can withstand temperatures down almost to freezing, but then during the day, it gets up into the 70s or 80s. So blotched blue tongues and eastern blue tongues are extremely hardy because of the temperature changes that they can withstand out here in the wild. So in our domestic situations in North America and Europe, it's primarily the imports from New Guinea and from Indonesia, and those constitute the majority of the blue tongues that we have in our domestic situations and in herpticulture. But if you can find them, get yourself a blotchy or an eastern blue tongue that's captive bred from a reputable breeder because of the extremes that these guys live through out here in the wild. They make really hardy lizards in our domestic situations. So look at this soil that we have here. It's this red dirt. And it's, it's not sand, it's actual dirt with bigger chunks of rock in it. And this is what the soil substrate looks like here in Australia, where the blue tongue skinks live. So that's what the ground looks like here in this habitat here in Australia. So for substrates with your blue tongue skinks, you know, you just can't go wrong with aspen shavings. It's super absorbent. They're not going to accidentally ingest it the way they would sand. So do not use sand in your enclosures with your blue tongue skinks. Those little sand granules can get under the scales of your skink and really irritate it. Plus when they're eating, they can actually accidentally ingest that sand and become impacted and that is going to be no good for you or your blue tongue skink. All right, so let's take a couple of temperature readings here. It's midday right now and that ground temperature is 107 degrees, which is 40 degrees Celsius. And here in the shade in the grass, it's 98 degrees which is 36 degrees Celsius. So again, it's midday out here and the ground temperature is this hot, but the blue tongues are out moving in it. So take into consideration that this is the hottest part of the day out here where blue tongue skinks live, but that should be your hot spot in your enclosure. And I've talked to a lot of people here in Australia that keep blue tongue skinks and the temperatures that I just read on this ground right now are exactly where they're keeping their hot spots. And then their cool spots are about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than that. The exception to that is the blotched blue tongue who lives at higher altitudes and likes it a little bit more cool than the rest of the blue tongues that are found here in Australia. But if you're keeping blue tongues from New Guinea or Indonesia, for instance, Marukis, it's a whole different ball game because up there, the humidity is different, the temperatures are different. This video is really just about the blue tongue skinks that are found here in Australia, so keep that in mind. So although we're out here looking for blue tongue skinks, I've got to show you this guy. This is a Cuttingham skink, and this is one of the big skink species that is found here in Australia. So take a look at that big blocky head. He's kind of like a bulldog of lizards in that he has muscles on either side of that big blocky head that serve to close that mouth. So even the hardest arthropods out here, he can turn into pudding in no time. But also take a look at those scales. Those scales are sharp and they're backwards facing. You cannot pet this guy backwards because of those really sharp scales, they prevent you from going backwards. They're not smooth like other skinks are. So what these Cuttingham skinks do as a defense is they'll go in between rock crevices and if a predator comes and tries to pull them out of that crevice, these specialized scales that are pointed and sharp at the end basically hook this guy into that crevice and there's no way that predator is going to be able to pull this Cunningham skink out of that crevice and make a meal out of this guy. Just another one of Australia's really awesome skink species that are out here. Just a beauty. All right, we've got another bluey up the road here. He's running, he's running. He's right in here somewhere. Oh, he disappeared in here. There he is. All right, I've got him. Oh, woo, look at that beauty. 
All right, so I got him out of those rocks, but look at this. This is another Eastern, but this is a gray phase of the Eastern. The other ones that we were finding were really green and had really vibrant orange sides down the tiger striping down the sides, as I like to call it. And the base color is completely slate gray. So this is a gray phase of an Eastern blue tongue skink. I gotta say, I'm partial to the green ones, but now that we found this guy, Ah, uh, the gray's pretty cool as well, but I'm still going with the green. So here, in just an average backyard here in Sydney, I just found this guy. Whoa, hey, come here, buddy. Can you just imagine living here in Sydney and just having wild eastern blue tongues just running through your backyard like it's no big deal? And that's exactly what these guys do. So all these people that live in suburban Sydney like this, seeing eastern blue tongues just here in their backyards is an everyday occurrence. These are actually pretty common skinks here in suburban backyards, more so than they really are in wild areas around Sydney. And the reason why blue tongues are so attracted to backyards like this one here in Sydney is because a lot of people plant gardens back here. Anytime you have landscaping or gardens or things like that, you're also going to attract a lot of bugs. So suburban backyards like this one in Sydney are perfect habitats for eastern blue tongue skinks. Man, this is just a gorgeous specimen and he's flawless. I don't see any mites or any ticks on him. He is just a flawless little dude. But right now, I'm gonna go set him back exactly where I found him in the suburban backyard, let him get back to whatever it was that he was doing out here before I came along, probably hunting all those bugs and eating some of the vegetation in this backyard. But it would be really cool to have more Eastern blue tongues in captive collections. But Australia has the strictest laws when it comes to importing and exporting animals, especially those from the wild. And those laws are in place for a reason. So again, yes, it would be cool to have these in captive collections, but this guy and all the wild skinks that are found here in Australia belong here in Australia in the wild. So I'm gonna go take him back to exactly where I found him and let him get back to what he was doing. But again, just a beautiful, eastern blue tongue skink found here in a suburban backyard in sydney you just can't get any more awesome than that well rattlers i gotta tell you i have such a soft spot for blue tongue skinks they are such awesome lizards they're so personable and they are just one of the quintessential australian lizards to be found out here and the blue tongue skinks they really are just hanging out in people's gardens and people's backyards sunning themselves on their landscaping rocks they're really that easy to find out here so rattlers there's going to be more adventures coming up from here in Australia. So like this video, share this video, and be sure to tell all your friends about this channel so that they can learn all about these amazing animals as well. And be sure to leave a comment below with a tip or technique on how you guys keep your blue tongues so that other people can learn from you as well. And until the next adventure from here in Australia, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.